Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to do the additional warm up on carbohydrates. Now on your mega sheet, you should already have some basic information about the carbohydrates. And it's important to know that carbohydrates, because they have this one to one ratio, do interact with water. And so one of the properties that we talk about in of water is how important it is to life on Earth. And the most important property to water um, for life on Earth is the fact that it's a versatile solvent. And carbohydrates are an example of a molecule that will interact with water thanks to water being polar. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is talk about these carbohydrates and how these glycosidic bonds are formed from monomers coming together. So on your mega sheet, I'm going to uh, draw this right next to your background information about the carbohydrate. I'm going to start by drawing the carbon skeleton of a monosaccharide, specifically a hexose, hex meaning six. So this is the basic carbon skeleton of a hexose. So this right here is the oxygen. And then every corner here, every point represents a carbon. And so when we number this molecule, we'll start from the oxygen and go clockwise numbering one through six. So this is what it would look like. Take a moment now if you need to stop the video so that you can draw this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a hydroxyl group to this carbon skeleton. A hydroxyl group is OH. And I'm not going to draw all the hydroxyl group. I'm just going to draw the two most important ones I want you to follow. They are going to be found at carbon number four and carbon number one. So there they are. And even though I wrote this one backwards, I wrote it as HO instead of OH. It's the oxygen that's bound to the carbon, not to the hydrogen. So there are other hydroxyl groups around this molecule, but these are the two we're going to focus on for this monomer right here, which is called alpha glucose. Now, when we take two monomers and put them together, that is going to be done through a process called dehydration synthesis. And so as the name implies, dehydration, we're going to remove water, which we learned from last class was H2O. So there is the, where the H2O is going to come from. And what gets left behind is this lonely oxygen right here in red. And so what's going to happen to that oxygen, it's still bound here to this monomer, but it's also going to go ahead and replace this bond over here to form one single bond like this. And that oxygen becomes the glycosidic bond made by dehydration synthesis, connecting these two monomers together. Now in box H, we're going to look at some specific examples of, mo of macromolecules and see how the structure of their monosaccharides becomes very important on how differently they function. So now what I'm going to do is in box eight, draw a couple of examples of the monomers for carbohydrates. These monomers are important to understand how structure affects function with these carbohydrates. So I'm going to start again with a basic carbon skeleton. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and add a hydroxyl group to carbon number one and carbon number four, just like we did with alpha glucose. Only this time, what I'm going to do is draw the hydroxyl group at carbon number one pointed upwards, because that is the configuration or the shape of beta glucose. And so that is what that would look like. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw that basic carbon skeleton again, only now at carbon number one and carbon number four, I'm going to draw the hydroxyl group pointing upwards for both number one and number four, and that is the sugar galactose. And it may not seem like a big deal whether we draw the OH pointing down or whether we draw the OH group pointing up, but it makes a big difference for the molecule. It's the difference between 
a sugar we can't break down versus a sugar we can break down or versus a sugar that has a completely different taste um, but is still digestible. So this orientation or this way that we are drawing these is very, very important to uh, living organisms because it's the, it's the difference between starving to death and getting your nutrition. The last two monomers I want to draw are um, the, the sugars that are part of our DNA and RNA. So they are ribose and deoxyribose. Now these are what are called pentoses. Pent means five. So they only have five carbons. So again, I'm going to start with this as our basic carbon skeleton for the pentoses. Based on the numbers I have here, you can see that there are only five carbons. So I'm going to draw a second carbon skeleton for this pentose. Remember, pentose means five carbons. The difference between these is the presence of a hydroxyl group. Now remember, hydroxyl group is, car is OH bound together. And for the two different sugars that you see here, um, this one versus this one, there's one hydroxyl group you need to look out for. If the pentose sugar that you are looking at has the hydroxyl group at carbon number two, like this, then the name of that five carbon sugar is called ribose. And it is the sugar of RNA. If the five carbon sugar you are looking at does not have that hydroxyl group here, we've removed the oxygen and OH group. So we've removed that hydroxyl group. This is called deoxyribose. And this is the sugar for DNA, which we will learn about more later in this unit and then more in depth in unit five. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.